Just look at that thing. Hey, what's going on everybody? Thank you so much for checking out the video and welcome to Keeping It Real Fishing. So here's how we're gonna have to start this. If you're seated, you need to stand up. And if you're standing, then you better have a seat. <laughs> um, seriously guys, I'm not even joking around. I'm about to show you something that's probably gonna blow your socks off. Whoa. W-H-O-A, like Neo in the Matrix. Whoa. Um, so what is it, guys? Well, Matlors is the manufacturer, and the product is soon to be released. As of the making of this video anyway, this is um, uh, the only example that I have. I have it for some field testing, and this model is going to be the Hammertail. There's that big tail there, the Hammertail Shad. I'd like to give you some measurements, if I may. The tail of the tape. Our fighter is coming in at seven and a half inches and weighing in at a solid 3.9 ounces. <laughs> but in all seriousness, guys, uh, just to give you an idea, uh, a better sense of what you're going to be pursuing, right? So this is, I guess the idea here is um, a big trophy bass. That's what Matt really focuses on, trophy size bass. Although you could probably use it for striper or musky or pike or anything else. Um, this is the idea. Big bass lure. And the four ounces. Keep that in mind with uh, whatever your gear is for throwing it. It's a beaut, man. And um, this is what I love about Matt. He's really one of my favorite manufacturers. Ever since I started into uh, throwing swim baits, it's been about four years now. Uh, my very first review on the channel, actually, was of the Matt Lore's Bluegill. I saw that thing and I was just like, that looks as real as as I've ever seen a lure, and Matt continues to evolve his craft. And uh, he just gets better and better. The nuance, the color, the shading, uh, the pouring of the plastic and everything, it just gets better and better uh, with each each successive uh, release that he does. And this one here is just, it's just mind blowing how real this looks. If we cover up the hook and the little points of the line tie and the little bottom thing here, I mean, seriously guys, if that was laying on the ground by the water you would say there's a shad there you wouldn't say there's a lure you'd be like hey there's a shad it's ridiculously good uh let me follow up that statement though guys because i do i have worked with matt on a few lures here and i just want you guys to know it's not carte blanche it's not a, a free pass uh, the purpose of the channel is to be keep it real and to, to help you guys with some of your buying decisions and to uh to be not critical but just be objective of lures and so while this is beautiful and that's high on my list of criteria, even more important for me, and, and I would advise, what well, sh should be more important for any of us, is the swimming action. I learned that a long time ago, is that a lure that swims and moves right in the water will get strikes all day long uh, above a lure that looks pretty, but doesn't elicit that action that convinces a fish to strike. So we know this lure, <laughs> it's 10 out of 10 in terms of looks. I mean, this is it. This is the, the best shad that I've, I've ever seen in terms of a soft lure. Um, and I expect the swimming action to be on point. I have yet to see uh, a Matt Lors product that he releases that doesn't swim great as well. Um, this one here, guys, we can expect swimming action uh, in the vein of Huddleston. Uh, this is definitely not a Huddleston tail. This is a patent protected tail from Matt, but it's in the same general idea, right? We have a big weighty mass of plastic back here and the idea is different than boot tails, which are smaller and lighter and move faster. Um, these heavy kind of pendulum or wedge style tails have that slower kicking action. 
They simply move more water because they are heavier, and these uh, almost always swim well at very, very slow speeds. You don't have to pass a lot of water over it when you're reeling to get this thing to kick. Um, so they work great in, in cold water. Uh, I also like using them year round. I use these big, um, uh, these wedge style tails in hot water, in uh, warm water, uh, with uh, equal success. I think they're a great year round style bait. So that's that's the approach on this one. Uh, what else can I tell you here, guys? Let's just take a look at it, shall we? I think the profile is right in line with uh, a shad, right? It's a good meaty profile, but it's not too thick, not too thin. Um, some of the cool design things that, that we're going to now, you can see the fins are clear. I mean, so they really are, are like the real thing. Bottom one there, again, clear. The tail is clear. It just looks dark because it's thicker, but it is totally light permeable. And uh, again, guys, it's not, it's not that that's guaranteed to get you more strikes or anything like that, but I don't know. I just have a lot of confidence in throwing lures that really, really mimic nature. I say, how can you go wrong with that? How can you ever go wrong? Because when that bass ate a shad eight hours ago or yesterday, it really looked like this. It didn't look like a spinnerbait. And we all know those work. But man, when you're trying to, I mean, my angle, as someone who tar tries to target trophy fish, I, I believe that when you approach reality, and you, the, the closer you can make that thing real, you got a better shot at fooling those older, wiser giants that we see so infrequently. They just don't make that many mistakes. And lures like this give me a lot of confidence to be able to pursue them. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I don't know all the details. Let me tell you what I, what I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be coming in multiple sizes. Um, the sink rate, I, I, Matt has never offered multiple sink rates. It's usually just been like a medium sink. For those of you guys familiar with Huddleston, they do like a slow and a fast, and it's very popular. But Matt's kind of struck the middle. It's usually like a medium sink. Um, what else? I don't know about colors. I'm assuming there's going to be different colors. We saw that with, we'll just roll in this real quick, with his uh, hard shad release. By the way, can you see the family resemblance? <laughs> if you got shad in your waters, man, you should definitely pick up one of each of these for your varied conditions. Uh, but anyway, going back to the colors, uh, he had a bunch of colors on this shad and different sizes. I just don't know. I just don't know. Uh, I think if only a few of these have been made, and I have the uh, the privilege of field testing it, but I don't know the details as of the making of this video. Uh, by the time you're watching this and this thing is out, you'll, you'll know as much as, as I do. But I just want to give you a heads up and let you know that this thing is coming very, very soon. Um, I'm making this video in mid-April, and I was told about four to six weeks that these should be available, I guess, barring any unforeseeables. So, uh, oh, one other thing I'd like to show you guys is how soft it is. Matt uh, always errs on the side of very, very soft plastics. Uh, yes, they will tear. You know, they do get beat up, but get yourself that bottle of Mend It. Mend It is miracle stuff, guys, and it just makes your baits good as new. It truly does. Do not fish any soft, big swim baits without Mend It. You're, you'd be crazy to do so. I have pickerel in my waters. And that's part of the reason I'm showing you this here, fresh out of the package and not even fished yet, is because I'm, I could totally just get broken off tomorrow by a pickerel and just not have anything to show you. So first things first, I wanted to show you it in its pristine condition as you would get it out of the package. It's just a sexy lure, man. It's just, when you have something that, that, we, that is created by man's hand, but I mean, it looks like it might flap, like it's just, it's ridiculous. It's so nice. But anyway, guys, that's pretty much it. Looking forward to getting this out tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to be going low and slow, looking for that giant bass. Hopefully I can connect. It's going to be a little bit of a stretch for me, though, man. Coming up on an 8-inch lure with that big, fat profile here in New Jersey is not an easy sell. I could easily go many trips without hooking up with something, but I'm going to push it. I'm going to push it. Like I said, this is so real looking. i got a lot of confidence. Um, if you guys want to hang out for just one more minute, being that this is a big bass lure, I have a couple other lures that I can do a comparison with to give you a sense of how it might stack up against uh, some other stuff that you might have. Okay guys, when, when I look at this, I, I, one of the first things that came to my mind is if, if you have shad in your waters, I think for a lot of our uh, friends in the south and, and going into the midwest, um, this may be kind of your, your new Huddleston. 
and I hate to keep mentioning that name in a Matt Lord's review, but it, it's just kind of unavoidable that the, uh, the, the big Huddleston trouts are just such a go-to for so many trophy size uh, bass anglers. And this to me is, is it now, if you're, if you have those shad and you throw trout, but they're not in your waters, I, th I think you found yourself a new uh, tool to pursue those big bass with the actual forage fish that's in your waters. So if I can, just for a size comparison, let me throw up that Huddleston trout right there. So that's the, uh, they say eight inch, but it's actually seven and a half. The seven and a half inch, uh, it's a rate of full five. As you can see, it's a top hook rainbow trout. And you can see profile wise, man, they are right in line, but look at the belly here. If that fish is viewing from the side, right? If they may be viewing from, you know, below, but viewed, viewed from the side, this is quite a more substantial meal than even the Huddleston big time meal. Let's take a look from the bottom for those fish that are looking up. You're, you have a little bit of a faster retrieve and that fish is below you and it's thinking about coming up and nailing this thing. This is the profile that they're going to see. Uh, pretty much in line with the Huddleston, a little bit slimmer with the 8 inch trout again. You can see but very much, I think this is it now man. You can see very similar the uh, idea behind the tail even though it's a different shape it's the same kind of principle. I don't know how many fish would be looking at it from this angle, but just to give you guys some more angles. And then if you're dragging it along the bottom, you could perhaps have a fish that's about to come down on it. So very, very similar. Just rather than showing them that rainbow trout or whatever color you throw of, uh, you may throw of the Huddleston, you're showing them this beautiful, <laughs> shimmery, reflective uh, shad profile and color. Uh, one other bait real quick guys. Um, also, well, actually two other baits. Those of you guys who throw the Matt Lore's bluegill, just to give you a little sense of size. Big difference, man. Big difference. I don't even get too many strikes on this, to be honest with you. I gotta throw this one a good amount to get my hookups. So this shad is gonna be a tough sell for me. I'm really gonna have to probably sling it for a good amount of time before I hook up, unless I get lucky. And then uh, one other one here, guys, other end of the spectrum, Kytex, such a popular lure. I love them myself. You know what size that is? That's the Kytex 6.8. I actually have the 7.8s, but I had this one handy. A lot of people throw this, and they think they're moving up into a big swim bait. They're targeting those big bass, and, and I'm not trying to knock you guys. It is a, it is a pretty good size lure, but again, just to give you some sense of scale, for those of you guys who are dead nuts locked in on big bites and big bites only, and you got shad in your water, look at that thing. You guys know that meme? It's that guy from uh, Futurama with the orange hair. And it's the thing where he's holding out his fist and he's got a wad full of cash. It says, shut up and take my money. That's what I think probably a lot of people are thinking right now. They're like, yo, video is 10 minutes too long. You had me at 30 seconds. Where can I buy it? <laughs> and I'm not promoting for Matt. He doesn't need me. And, uh, but I'm just saying, guys, Jesus Christ, look at that thing. That is a beautiful, beautiful lore. And I have no doubt that this is going to be responsible for some giants in 2018. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Uh, we're going to transition now actually to the water. And I'm going to give you some uh, follow-up, having fished it for a little while. Hopefully I can show you some fish on it. Uh, but if not, I'm going to report back to you with the swimming action how the paint has held up, and just anything that happens over the course of using it. If that inner insert, if it's glued in there good, or if that comes loose. I know that happened on some of his other ones. Uh, anyway, just a follow-up to let you know how everything's been working out with the new Matt Lore's Hammertail Shad. Hey guys, we're back. When we last spoke <laughs> a couple seconds ago, it was April and now it's the end of June and I've been putting in some time with the hammertail shad. Let me give you the bad news first. I hate it when this happens, but I don't have any fish to show for you. I was slinging this really hard in the beginning of the year in the cold water temps and here in New Jersey, I like to throw that big eight inch Huddleston. 
low and slow and just crawl that early in the spring in the pre-spawn and uh, I just supplemented this this year for my Huddleston I was pretty certain I was gonna get a bite or two uh, and I had some pickerel tear it up pretty nice as you'll be able to see from uh, I'll just roll in the shot there what that looks like I was really getting hammered on the picks but uh, ah, no bass to show and uh, once we got up to about 55 degrees I started focusing on my bluegill bait so please don't let that be any indication of how you think the lore is you guys can see from the swimming action and make up your own minds but um i think it's pretty uh pretty obvious that it's not only great looking lore but it also moves great in the water it's just circumstantial for me here in the east coast it's a big lord it's hard to get a bite uh, i'm going to go back to slinging this uh primarily in the fall but also i'm going to sling it here all throughout the summer um in choice spots and if i do get a really nice bite i'm definitely going to uh, upload that video so that's out of the way uh, let me follow up some things I was just saying at the tabletop. The sink rate. I said I didn't know. Well, now I do. <laughs> I've been looking at these things, and I uh, just I, I checked in with Matt just to make sure there wasn't going to be any changes. Sink rate on this, even though he doesn't have an actual numeric, when I look at it in the water, you're looking at about a foot per second. Okay, so it sounds like a fast sink, uh, but it's pretty well controlled, and uh, I can roll in some footage here as well. If you keep your rod tip high and keep a kind of a medium fast retrieve, you can even burn this across the surface and keep it there with relative ease. So the, don't let that uh, one foot per second turn you off and think it's only gonna be a, a bottom use lure. That's not really the case. Uh, the other thing is colors, guys. Let me show you some of these colors. So this one here was the, uh, the first one I had, and I wanna say that this is probably gonna be the Threadfin Shad and uh, another one I have here, I believe this is going to be the Gizzard Shad. It doesn't have that blue in it, a little darker back. And there might be some other colors as well. Um, but I know that we're going to have at least those two. And that follows suit with what uh, Matt Lores released on the Strong Shad, on the hard-bodied bait. Uh, there was those two colors on that as well. Uh, sizes, uh, I said I didn't know about the sizes. I do now. Spoke to the manufacturer. This is coming in but one size. You're looking at about seven and a half inches on this, so there's not going to be any smaller versions of it. Uh, just a side note, guys. If you look on the site, and if you do want a smaller shad, uh, he has been making one. It just kind of has a kind of flies under the radar. It's in the section with the um, oh, what? Not the hard gills with the um, ah, what is it? Strong gills, hard gills, ultimate gills. If you look at the section with the ultimate gills, you'll actually see the smaller shads in there. They kind of have the body of the gill, but they're, they're made to look like a shad, just so you guys know. Um, all right, guys, so that's pretty much it on the follow-up. Let me just let me just tell you how it's, how it's been it just in use over the past couple months. Let's start with what I've been fishing it on. Uh, I've been fishing it on what's actually a new combo for me, and that is the Savage Gear Browser. That is the extra heavy swim bait. I think this one, yeah, it's rated from two to eight ounces and it is a perfect, perfect match for this, man. I could heave this thing out there and you know when a rod just feels right? Like it's loading up right in that sweet spot. It's not testing the rod. It's not going too deep into the blank, but you know you're utilizing a lot of the rod. It just, it's just that feels so good and effortless when you bomb this thing and you can bomb this thing. Uh, so I've been using it on the new browser and you can see I uh, have the, the Cardiff. Cardiff's been around for a long time. I plan on doing a review on this. As long as it's been around, I just picked up one, and I am remiss that I didn't pick up one years ago. For an economical reel, I'm actually liking this more than some of my more expensive round reels. This thing is awesome. And this combo here, guys, I, um, you know, I don't, I don't care what you buy. There's, I'm not getting money for any of this stuff, but just in practice, this is so economical, these two, and I can't imagine anything feeling better for this, as well as I throw on, you know, the Huddlestons as well, just to see how it feel. Anything in that three to five ounce soft bait range, man, this is this is so nice. So anyway, that's what I've been fishing it on. All right, guys, that's enough here. Let's just break from the boat for a second. Uh, throughout the video at the tabletop, we were looking at a lot of swimming action. I threw a lot of snippets in there, uh, but I really want to drive home the point, or I want to show you and let you make your own decision as to how you think uh, the swimming action is, because that's really what it's all about with these lures, right? Uh, so let's do a little montage right now of nothing but swimming action and take a close look at that.
Alright everybody, so what did you think? Got a good look there at the swimming action. Uh, I have my own opinions, but ultimately, you know, it has to be a lure that suits your needs or, you know, that you feel is is going to get them to bite. Um, Alright, so now let's just roll into the kind of the, the, the final and, the, and the, the opinion piece. And I'll give you my, my thoughts on it, having fished it now for a while. I really think it's an excellent lure. I said this earlier at the tabletop, and, and this is where I think this lure is, is profound, is the Huddleston, the 8-inch Huddleston has been such a mainstay since it came out for so many anglers. And a lot of people will say, myself included, that that lure gets bit even in lakes that don't have trout. But I always feel extra confident, and I think you are hedging your bets if you throw the forage fish that are present in your waters. And so the idea here is, guys, if you are a big bait angler and you like throwing those big 7 and 8 inch soft plastics, but up until now you've had, you know, a mix of other things, but the HUD's really stood out and been the one, and you have shad. You're in the south, you're in the midwest. I mean, we even have them some, sometime here in the, in the northeast, but if you have shad, you've got it now, man. You've got it. You've got that same kind of slow pumping tail that you can use in those cold water situations. But this thing really, when you burn it, it really puts out a lot of thump. It's a good lure even in the warm water. But you have the profile that represents the fish that are actually in your water. So that's where I think this thing just kicks butt. Um, let's throw up a little chart here, guys. Let's have a little bit of fun. Check my background here. And uh, we're going to do a little pro-con list. You ready? Let's go. Right here, we're going to do some pros. The first pro is the looks. Uh, this is what Matt Lures hangs his hat on. This is what he does. It's anatomically correct, highly detailed lures that really come close to something that's almost taxidermied except with a hook on it. So it's got that. Uh, the second thing, in my opinion, is the swimming action. It is excellent. Uh, it's not just a pretty face. It really moves great in the water. You have that whole body shimmy. You feel that thump coming through your line, particularly if you're using braid to a leader, which is what I use. And so it knocks it out of the park there. Now, let's talk about a couple cons. Let's put those right here. The first thing I didn't like, guys, and let's come in close on this, see if you can get a focus. You see the eye of that hook? That doesn't have to be that big. And at the end of the day, do I feel that's going to change how many strikes that I get? Well, maybe not necessarily, but for a lure that every other little thing has been taken so seriously, every little nuance of it, uh, that hook eye there, I would love to see it kind of buried down, like a lot of other manufacturers, much more subtle, such that you almost have to push down the plastic to put your line through. It would just add to an otherwise, you know, super realistic bait. But right there, it's kind of obnoxiously big. The other thing, and this we have to see, and let me roll in my one that I've been fishing now, and I have a lot of time on, and I don't want to scare you, and I don't want to say something that hasn't happened, but it looks like it's about to happen, is uh, we're talking about now the durability of the lure. And you see, if I do something like this, let's get our focus going here, and I could probably just roll in some other clips as well, but you see right there, you can kind of see the internal frame, it's very squared off right there. Same thing here. Um, that's, I mean, even when I have it like kind of hanging in my car and I'm transporting it and just the weight of the tail is kind of going down like, like that, you can see. It just looks like an area, it's a high wear area and just literally the weight of the back end kind of pushes down and, and forms against that plastic there. It just looks like a spot that with time that the plastic is going to break. The other thing is, and a lot of you guys will know this um, from previous Matt Lore soft baits, is that that internal harness, it feels pretty good. Like it's not too sloppy, but I am starting to get a little bit of free play on the end such that the plastic is not like adhering to that internal harness. It's starting to get loose such that I can move the plastic in and around the harness. Um, I know Matt Allen did a video on this and a lot of people have doing this over the years. And I think even Matt Servant of Matt Lures has kind of endorsed this idea. It said, listen, when you pour these, you know, you can't have glue on the insert as you're pouring the lure. Um, but if you go along this, with a razor blade, open it up, pull back the skin, and then put a lot of super glue on that internal plastic harness, close it all back up, and then use some mend it on where you cut. It will really, really lock the bait to that internal harness. And this one hasn't blown out on me yet, and so I don't really want to scare you guys, but um, that's what I've always seen on the Ultimate Gills, the Hammer Gills, the others. You know, in time, and with a good fish that's thrashing on it, you can break one of these baits on one fish and that's something you obviously don't want to do so um 
We're going to put that kind of in the con category, even though it hasn't happened yet. I anticipate it will happen. And it's just the nature of how these, these baits are made, guys. Slice it open, super glue it, mend it back together. And on any bait, all my other mat lures that I've done that to, they have never failed me after that. You know, things might rip off and the plastic might, you know, tear away on the outside, but that internal harness will not separate once you do that. So that's, that's a good thing. Switch sides here, guys, to the side. And last thing, what I'd like to see. There's one thing that I'd like to see, and I've actually, uh, contact the Meta Bell. I, I don't know. I just, I think it's such an omission in the lineup is I would love to see on this lure or any of his other lures, I'd love to see him develop a weedless system. Uh, we see this in a lot of other manufacturers. You know, a lot of us are rocking the, those those uh, owner beast hooks or the trocar magnums and just large weedless swim baits are, are huge. And people are finding that with the right gear, with a stout enough rod and with stout line, you can throw that weedless almost anywhere and your hookup ratios are really, really close to an exposed hook lure. Um, I would love, I mean, this would just eclipse, you know, the balance of realism to get all of that, but to not have an exposed hook. Um, that's a lure that you could slow down to an absolute crawl, dead stick it, there's nothing there that shows, that, that, that shows the fish that it's, it's not real. And you guys know that fish gin clear water, you know, having those big exposed hooks, I mean, it is what it is, but, um, that's just something I'd like to see. I would love to see Matt in the future produce a fully weedless model. Change of clothes. Horrible editing sequence. Just shot this in there. But for good reason, guys. If you're still watching, I'm glad. Because as I was throwing together the video, as I was editing it, I realized that I brought up a, some uh, talking points I mentioned. And I never really followed through on them and, and explained them further. Let's throw them both up there. And hopefully she focuses. Okay. See this little, oh, come on, focus. See that little bottom hook guy, guys? All right, so I was talking to a mat manufacturer and this did not make it to production. Now this could change, but this is the last that I heard was that that was originally supposed to be there. And I, I don't know if this happened in practice or whatever, but he said that strength wise, it wasn't holding up to stripers. I guess when, you know, doing a bottom mount treble hook, um, it was, tearing out the insert or messing up the lure in some way. So the, this one, and I have one other one, you can see that little um, eye hook there is no longer present. Actually, it's there. If you get one, you'll feel it. It's still there. Uh, it's used somehow in, um, in alignment of making the lure, but functionally, you're not going to be tying anything to it. So that's pretty important, guys. Keep this in mind is that this is not going to be a lure I mean, I'm sure you could improvise something, but it's not going to be a lure that you could easily run a bottom treble on. You're looking at a top hook lure only. So something very important to keep in mind, unless something changes and then, you know, you'll see it on the site and I'll try to put something in the, uh, in the comments to, to annotate. But so that was a little bit difference there. You guys might've seen that at the tabletop and said, all right, cool. I'll run that bottom hook treble. And as it stands right now, you're not going to be able to. All right, everybody, so that's a wrap. Um, I've had a lot of fun fishing this new lure. I am remiss <laughs> that I wasn't able to get a fish on it, but again, please don't read into that. That's just circumstantial. It's a big lure for me here in the Northeast. I am gonna continue to fish it, and I guarantee you, I will get some fish on it, and when I do, I'll just make a single kind of like cast to catch on that and upload it. But uh, yeah, guys, that's a wrap. This is the new Matt Lures Hammertail Shad. In my opinion, it is a uh, profoundly excellent large shad uh, soft bodied swim bait and I, I really think kind of the premier one on the market right now uh, just just a fantastic lure overall and that's it guys if you have any questions on it please leave them below in the comments i'll be sure to get back to you thanks for watching